We wish that weapon supplies came earlier. We would have been able to save Mariupol if we got the long-range missiles before that. But right now, for this big battle of Donbass that is unfolding right now as we speak, uh, that is crucially important to have continued weapon supplies. So, yes, unfortunately, we are in a position where we have to keep on asking for more because, of course, the Russians are basically taking everything that they got in the whole of Russia in a huge country and putting it against us, against Ukrainians, but also against basically the whole Western civilization. Uh, let's ju- talk now to Inna Solson, who is uh, an MP for, for Western Ukraine. Good morning to you, Inna. Good morning. Good to have you with us. Um, just tell us, first of all, what is the latest uh, situation as far as you can understand it? We've had these missile attacks on Odessa, and it sounds like there is a renewed Russian push on that besieged port of Mariupol and the last Ukrainian forces holding out there. Uh, that is true. So uh, yesterday, Russians killed uh, eight people in a missile strike in Odessa, including a three-month-old child. This is a very tragic story. Basically, the whole family was killed in one missile hit, uh, a mother, a young child, and uh, a grandmother, the mother of this young woman. And, and as tragic to, to make it even more tragic, uh, the husband of uh, and the father of, of a child uh, has left literally for 10 minutes, and he came back, and he saw his whole home destroyed, and his whole family dead and uh, we just read a statement from him and he says I wish I were there and killed together with them because I can't imagine how to live uh, after what happened uh, to my family after this Uh, and there were other attacks in the south of Ukraine uh, both in Odessa and also in the Dnipropetrovsk region uh, over the night Uh, so people were uh, not uh, people were not killed over the night but uh, uh, some infrastructural objects have been destroyed over the night as well but of course, the situation is worst of all in Mariupol. That is, the situation is just just tragic there. And uh, the Russians are basically bombing Azovstal industrial area, uh, and I quote uh, people from there, uh, with everything they have. And they are bombing it nonstop, all the time, day and night, with everything they got. And they're just trying to, you know, to smoke people out of that area uh, with the single goal of just killing everyone who is still there. Do you fear that it is now just a question of time before Mariupol falls and uh, the Russian forces then have control of a, a sweep of territory from the east down to the southern coast? That is definitely their goal. We have heard over the past couple of days several uh, repre- representatives of, of a Russian regime claiming that uh, their goals in Ukraine right now are the following. Number one is to have a land corridor from uh, Donbass, People's Republic, so-called, uh, to Crimea, but then also a land corridor from uh, Crimea to Transnistria, where, as they claim, the Russian-speaking population is being discriminated against. And then that is probably one of the reasons why they started attacking Odessa so much because Odessa was not uh, hit uh, so much before up until uh, yesterday. But right now, in order to get to Transnistria, they would have to get Odessa, at least in their their mind. So I believe that that is what they're doing right now uh, when they decided that they are not planning to overthrow the regime in Kiev as they were claiming it uh, to be the goal in the beginning. But yes, Mariupol is right now one of the major points of, of, um, of this uh, battle. Uh, for two reasons, you have to realize. Number one, it became a symbol of resistance in Donbass, and it would be crucially important for Putin to claim this victory. But okay. second, it also has a military significance because Russians right now, they have to keep a uh, quite significant number of Russian troops in Mariupol to continue this fight. Once Mariupol is completely fallen, they would release those uh, troops from Mariupol and then they will send them to other parts of Donbass, uh, strengthening their forces in this large battle of Donbass and going there. We've had a British government minister on the programme this morning talking about the support that the UK is providing to Ukraine. Um, But are you still in need of more weapons, more military hardware, despite the additional packages announced by the British Prime Minister, by the US President and so on? Well, first of all, I want to thank everyone who is helping us with weapons. That is truly appreciated and, and we're truly grateful for that. We wish that weapon supplies came earlier. We would have been able to save Mariupol if we got the long-range missiles before that. But right now, for this big battle of Donbass that is unfolding right now as we speak, uh, that is crucially important to have continued weapon supplies. So, yes, unfortunately, we are in a position where we have to keep on asking for more because, of course, the Russians are basically taking everything that they got 
in the whole of Russia in a huge country and putting it against us, against Ukrainians, but also against basically the whole Western civilization. So we have to keep on asking you for heavy weaponry in order to be able to defend both us, but also the rest of Europe as we are doing right now. And there is a story in the Sunday Times newspaper here in London today, which reveals how successive British governments over seven years turned down requests for military hardware from Ukraine, uh, including after the Russian forces had seized Crimea. Do you think, do you wish that the UK, NATO, the West had done more to support Ukraine before this latest invasion? I uh, will be completely honest with you. If in 2014, the West reacted properly to the annexation of Crimea and the beginning of the war in Donbass, if the sanctions that we are having today were introduced in 2014, and if the West would uh, react properly in, in other dimensions, including military one, we wouldn't have had this terrible invasion in Ukraine today. Because every time the West believes that they do not want to, you know, to escalate, they don't want to provoke Putin, for Putin that means only one thing, that he can go further. And he went further after after he invaded Georgia, after he took over parts of, of Moldova, after he started the war in Donbass and annexed Crimea. The West always was thinking like, oh, we don't want to escalate. Uh, he didn't do too much damage, so we can continue uh, dealing with him. Uh, France and Germany have been continuing uh, selling weapons to Russia weapons they're now using against Ukrainians in 2022. So unfortunately, the West believed that this not escalate logic would work, but it worked in a different uh, in a different direction, in an opposite direction, actually. For Putin, that meant that he has a green light to go forward, and that is what he did in Ukraine in 2022, unfortunately. Inna Solson, MP, uh, Deputy Head of the Holost Party in Ukraine. Great to have you with us. Thank you very much indeed. 